Hi, everyone. I'm Sasha, product manager of Android Camera. Welcome to our session, where we'll discuss how to build a high-quality Android camera experience. Before we dive in, I want to highlight the importance of camera experiences. In fact, by the end of this 20-minute session, 34 million people will use their Android camera. It's a staggering statistic and highlights the scope and potential impact of your work as a camera experience app developer. What's more, we know camera to be a number one factor driving both initial purchase and ongoing satisfaction with a device. As a result, whether you're building a payments app that needs to scan QR codes, a marketplace app that allows users to capture a profile photo, or a social media app that offers rich video creation experiences, we want to make sure you're supported in bringing a high quality experience to your users. Specifically, in this talk, we'll focus on three pillars. First, we'll discuss how to create polished camera previews built on top of Camera 2 and Camera X, including new API additions that make it easier than ever to handle orientation changes on phones, tablets, and even foldables. Next, we'll discuss how to bring premium visual quality to your app, including bringing HDR video, low light capture, and battery savings to your users. Then we'll end with an overview of everything else that's new on Android 14, so that you can leverage the most of Android in your apps. With that, let's get started. I'll pass it to my colleague Donovan to discuss polished camera previews. Thanks, Sasha. My name's Donovan, and today I'm going to talk to you about best practices for polished camera previews on all screen sizes and device types. The camera preview is often the very first interaction your users get with the camera in your app. And there are a number of common problems we see in some apps that I'm here to help you avoid. First, a distorted preview can instantly make an app feel broken and less premium. With the number of different camera sensors and screen sizes in the Android ecosystem, it's hard to test every combination. Another problem is when the preview doesn't match what's actually captured in a photo or video. App users expect a what you see is what you get experience. This talk will help you with both of these issues and more. First, I'll talk about preview stabilization. We've had video stabilization since Android 5, and now on devices running Android 13, you can set video stabilization to preview stabilization so that the final recording matches what was shown in the camera preview. As you can see in the diagram on the right, if stabilization is applied to the video but not to the preview, which is the case when video stabilization is simply set to on, then the preview isn't necessarily showing what is being recorded since the device needs to crop into the frame to perform stabilization on the video stream. Let's start off looking at the camera two code to configure preview stabilization. First, get the list of available video stabilization modes. Then, if that list contains preview stabilization, set the video stabilization mode accordingly on the capture request builder. The camera X code looks very similar, but instead of a capture request builder, we have a camera object from the call to bind to lifecycle. Just like in the last example, we first get the available video stabilization modes from the camera to camera info object. Then, if preview stabilization is available, we use a camera to camera control object to set the underlying camera to capture request option, like so. Next, let's take a look at some convenience classes in our Jetpack library offering that help with camera previews. Our two Jetpack preview classes can help your camera app deal with screens of all shapes and sizes. For Camera X, you can use the Preview View class. For Camera 2, the class you can use is Camera Viewfinder. These classes can be configured so that your preview will display properly no matter what screen it's on. Dealing with every screen size can be tricky. 
if the camera stream aspect ratio differs from your previews aspect ratio, naively putting the image on the screen will lead to stretching. You have to make a decision to crop some of the image or show bars on one dimension of the preview. Both Jetpack preview classes give you six scale types for properly displaying a preview. The top row are fit scale types, where the entire image is fit into the viewport, resulting in empty space in the longer viewport dimension. You can specify fit start, fit center, or fit end, represented by the left, middle, and right columns, respectively. The bottom row are fill scale types, where the image will fill the viewport, but that means that some of the image will be cropped out of view. You can specify fill start, fill center, or fill end, again, going from left to right. The default value for both camera viewport and preview view is fill center. Before jumping into the code, let's take a look at a company that had success with using Camera X's preview view. When Evernote decided to rewrite their document scanner using Camera X, they went all in. As a result, they saw a number of benefits like the ones we've already discussed. First, Camera X's easy to use API made handling the camera logic and displaying the preview simple. Also, Camera X's MLKit analyzer seamlessly integrated Google's MLKit library and mapped the document dimensions to the preview. Finally, the Evernote team was able to achieve a blazingly fast development pace, writing and testing their Camera X rewrite in under three weeks. In Camera X, the code to set up a preview view is really minimal. First, get a reference to your view layout's preview view. Then, create a lifecycle camera controller and bind it to your activity's lifecycle. Then, set the controller on the preview view, and you're done. Camera X also provides advanced preview functionality on top of the basics. For example, using the built-in MLKit integration, you can run each frame through an MLKit model and Camera X will map the frame's coordinates to your preview coordinates automatically. And newly added in the 1.3.0 alpha that's currently out, you can run graphics libraries effects on your preview, and the same effects can be applied to photos and videos to, again, give users the consistent experience they expect. Now let's see how this is done with Camera Viewfinder in a Camera 2 app. First, Create a camera viewfinder passing in a context. Then call request surface async and save a reference to the surface listenable future. Then in the on success function of the surface listenable future, you create a camera capture session like a typical camera two app. But instead of providing a texture view or surface view as target surfaces, you'd use the resulting camera viewfinder surface. Finally, I'm going to go over some considerations for showing previews on large screen devices like tablets and foldables. The Jetpack preview classes were built with large screens in mind. So using camera viewport or preview view as we've discussed, your app will work well on large screens too. When LinkedIn switched to Camera X, they saw a number of benefits relating to large screens. For example, they saw improvements in aspect ratio and rotation management on large screens. They also benefited from Camera X's built-in multi-window support, which handled this common user flow on large screen devices. Finally, they saw an overall code reduction resulting in better code quality and maintainability. With these tips, you can now navigate your way through displaying a camera preview on many display sizes and types. Now I'll hand it over to my colleague Mozart, who will talk about premium visual quality. Thanks, Donovan. Hi, my name is Mozart Lewis, and let's talk about achieving premium visual quality in Camera 2 and Camera X. We've taken feedback from developers on exactly what they needed from Camera, and we've landed major changes and several improvements to the framework to improve visual quality and fidelity 
of the images created by Android camera. Let's start with HDR video. In Android 13, we have introduced HDR video capture, which provides higher contrast and more colors to encoded video. Your camera capture will be able to produce much brighter videos and more saturated colors compared to SDR. And with HDR video capture comes 10-bit color capture as well, which enables you to capture a little over 1 billion colors instead of shy of just 17 million. This should make colors in video smoother and more consistent and avoid the dreaded banding that can occur when subtle shifts in color are represented incorrectly. You can use a function like this to check if the device supports 10-bit output. Using the camera manager, call the get camera characteristics function with the key request available capabilities. From there, we can check if the key request available capabilities dynamic range 10-bit exists in the camera's capabilities. To check which dynamic range profiles are supported, we can use a function like this that uses the camera manager to query for request available dynamic range profiles. From there, you can check, for instance, if HDR10 Plus is supported. Note that we are requiring that all 10-bit output capable devices support HLG10 to assure consistency across devices. Other formats are at the discretion of the device manufacturer. With that done, we'll set up each output configuration with a selected dynamic range profile. For instance, here we set each configuration's dynamic range profile to HDR10+. The last thing is to set up media format for HDR encoding. We'll use the format.setInteger function to set the following parameters color format to color format surface, profile to HEVC profile main 10, color transfer to HLG or HDR10+, and color standard to BT2020. Great, that's how you get HDR video running in your app. Next, let's talk about stream use cases. Before stream use cases, the camera device was unaware of the reason you are requesting a stream. This means it will give you the default, unoptimized stream forever. Now, with stream use cases, the stream is tagged and will let the camera device know why the stream is being created. Here is a list of supported stream use cases. Default, which covers all existing behavior. Preview, which is recommended for viewfinder or in-app image analysis. Still capture and video record. Video call, which is recommended for long-running camera use where power drain is a concern. And preview video still, which is a multi-purpose stream recommended for social media apps or single stream use cases. Let's see a demonstration of how this looks like in practice. The preview use case can optimize for performance and usability as a viewfinder, but not necessarily for image quality while the still capture use case will likely optimize for high quality image capture, but it's not expected to maintain preview like frame rates. You can check if a stream use case is supported using a function like so. Query the camera manager for the key scalar available stream use cases. You can then configure each output configuration and set the config.stream use case to the selected use case. Finally, let's talk about extensions. Device manufacturers can expose special capabilities like night mode and bokeh to third-party developers through camera extensions. For instance, Snap has seen success using the night extension within their app. Their use of the night extension dramatically improved image quality during tough lighting conditions. Here's a list of extensions currently available. Extension night, useful for low light conditions, Extension HDR, high dynamic range for still capture. Extension Auto, automatically selects another extension based off of OEM parameters. Extension Bokeh, focused subject with a blurry background. And Extension Face Retouch. Like everything else in camera, we must query to assure the camera is able to support extensions. We make a method like this to check if a specific extension is available based on the camera ID. Let's see an example 
of creating a session with the Bokeh extension. We would first check if the extension is supported. Then we would implement our camera extension session .state callback, and we will have an onConfigured and onConfigured failed functions. Instead of creating the normal session configuration object, we create an extension session configuration. From there, we call device.createExtension session. I'm also pleased to announce that all of these features that improve image quality are available in Camera X as of 1.3.0 alpha. With that, I'll pass it back to Sasha to talk about what's up and coming for Camera in Android 14. Thanks, Mozart. Before we close out, I want to share three more new features that are launching in Android 14. In Android 13, we launched HDR Video Capture. Now, we're adding to our HDR experiences by launching Ultra HDR for still captures. Ultra HDR lets you bring 10-bit HDR capture to your users for more vibrant content. We know AppCompat is important to developers like you. So we've designed a backwards compatible JPEG R format for Ultra HDR. Android 14 also offers P3 color space, which means your Android app can now display content at par with digital cinema standards with just a few lines of code. Lastly, we've made several zoom optimizations. For example, Android 14 now allows you to prioritize zoom control setup latency and offers in-sensor zoom to increase resolution of zoomed-in viewfinders. Together, this gives users faster, crisper zoom. Now that we've covered polished camera previews, visual quality enhancements, and all else new in Android 14, we'd like to end with a thank you. We appreciate your collaboration and look forward to seeing what you deliver to Android cameras this year.